Welcome back. So this is the second project of a series called Four Ways. And um, as you probably know, this is a collaboration between Mike Peace, Sam Angelo, uh, Richard Raffen and uh, myself. And um, as the previous time you'll see the four different ways to make a single project uh, with the same basic the properties or uh, specifications. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you all for such a great um, uh, feedback on the first project in March, uh, which was a cross grain box. And um, I mean, I'm really honored to be in this company and uh, yeah, just Thank you for for watching our videos. They are long format videos, and um, but hopefully you get a lot of out of it. And uh, you have to watch it four times. So I really appreciate your time. Um, we are all busy in this day and age. So without any further ado, let's go to the lathe, and I'll show you uh, this month's project. So this month's project is a wide rim bowl. Uh, some general dimensions uh, should be around the 9 by 3, which is 230 mil by 80 mil. Uh, mine is slightly bigger. That's the all uh, the the smallest uh, um, wide rim uh, rough out bowl I had on the shelf behind me. Uh, this is what I'm going with. So mine is just a little less than 11 inches or uh, that's a little less than 280 mil and this side is slightly longer that's 11 and a quarter that's 286 mil. Um, so this side is narrower so it's kind of a ellipse shape i have a sort of a shape that i'm going for already set in now what i want to do especially on the outside first thing is to chew it up see if there are any cracks although i don't see them but uh, you know i can deceive slightly um, so and in, at the finished shape i would like to leave some detail here at the corner uh, of a bolt transition transition to a rim transition and uh, that decoration has another purpose and that's strength if i go a little bit thin on the rim side here especially at the transition between the bowl and the rim uh, i have a thickness down here to support you know so uh, first things first, let's mount it on the lathe and uh, see what we can uh, do with this shape. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to mount it, grab it by this uh, foot. It's obviously not true up by any means. It's elongated, it's ellipse, but it will be enough to just grab it. And you can see how it distorts as it uh, dries. Now I'm going to put a lip inside so I can expand the jaws in. So I watch the chuck jaws and the chuck itself on this side and uh, I want to like follow the line inside and uh, go slightly larger. So somewhere around here, I think it will be okay. So it's slightly undercut that way. Now this is something that usually happens when uh, I when when I go to remount this. It uh, could be that it's all the way in the the chuck is all the way in the bowl, so I can't reach the 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 thing with the you know where you open and close the jaws here in the mechanism. So with this key at least. And what I have here is a regular Allen key and that way I can position it inside. I just need to open up the jaws. Yeah, 
and you can wiggle it slightly and you can feel it when it's uh, in, in its place and just expand the jaws okay okay so uh, I'm going to use a half inch spindle gouge uh, just to go lightly over the surface and remove all of the you, you see the fuzzy line the eccentricity which is um, everything that is out of round so I want to throw it up make it round again so first you do the foot there so if you god forbid if it's fall off but won't but if it does I still have a tenon here which I can grab and reverse again and it will be true again so just go lightly over the surface That's done. I want to chew the rim. A little bit more. I want to set the diameter. At this stage I don't mind go all the way through from this side uh, because I haven't chewed the top yet so if it does break it will break usually on the end grain part which I'll show you here on this part here and uh, that part is uh, already high enough so and uh, I have here uh, remnants of wormhole so that's something to take care of you can probably see how it wobbles and uh, how much it's out of true so you hear the knocking sound and when you come to uh, full circle or clean uh, everything that it's true you hear the sound changes you hear the knocking sound here and when I get close to round uh, oh, sorry true you'll uh, see more of a steady sound like that just want to take off the sharp edge just in case okay so that's true a little bit more here okay we'll do that now okay that's nice and true now we can see what we can do with the design the shape what I'm thinking is I kind of like uh, having a foot here uh, but that might not be the case if I can't remove uh, this uh, leftover of a wormhole and uh, I should be uh, now, like I said, I would like to incorporate the foot as well into the design, just because um, of the height of the of the ball. So, what I'm thinking is this is the size 
of closed jaws now I won't be able to remove all of this or maybe I will because there's still a lip here about two mil okay I think I'll be able to get it uh, to remove it and still have a small foot and uh, I think I'll go with that route on the on the base here and if I see that uh, the foot is like uh, not playing with the rest of it or the rest of the ball I can remove it later by the end of the video okay let's smooth everything up and uh, I want to put that detail here which I mentioned Okay, now I can set or mark at least for now. That's it. And I'll go just slightly bigger. for now okay okay so the easiest way to get this shape uh, fairly smooth um, at least at this stage is to do a push cut or a shit cut with the ball gauge And I want to leave some of this stuff in the corner for now, at least. The left wing. Okay, so that's more or less flat. So that's pretty much there. Now, like I said, I would like to leave some detail here at the corner. So I'll actually go with the spindle gouge. This one is uh, from Crown, which has a little bit shallower foot than uh, Henry Taylor. And uh, it's actually acting more like a detail gouge. So, kind of uh, extend this part here down the curve, at least. And now I can visualize what I want to leave here, what kind of detail I would like here. Okay, that's much better. So I'm sneaking up on the, this part here. So as I'm blending this curve and this curve, uh, at least for this rock shape now, uh, I'm getting what I want here. Okay, so that's pretty much how I'm going to leave it, maybe slightly tweak it a bit later. So now what I want to do is smooth this ball part here and uh, 
for that I'm going to have to move the camera a bit further. Now I can use the scraper. And I'm watching my progress up on the horizon. With the scraper I can manipulate the curve as I want it without taking it too far, let's say. bit more Okay, so it's a slight curve from this part down there, but I feel I can maybe get a little bit more here. Like that. Just want to get it smooth. Let's just see the surface, it feels nice. But I have some idea what I, what I want to do here. I'm going to mimic this uh, molding here to here as well and leave myself maybe a mill to grab a ball.
Okay, sanding all done. Oh, I just saw some marks here. Just want to get rid of those. Okay, that turned out nicely. Now let's hollow it. Okay, so I'll grab this tiny ridge here. Just want to go up in the chuck all the way oh, that's running nice and true first things first is to get the rim done so as as it becomes thin I'll put my hand behind it Just to get it true. So we have a lot of eccentricity here. to curve that in more. Okay. Now I can smooth this up. I have a ball gouge in my hand, so I'll use it. more here have still a uh, rough spot here a little bit more
okay so I can smooth the bottom part with the scraper Okay, let's see how is the surface. Okay, not too bad. That will send out nicely. Now when I was talking about decoration here, I'm not sure if I have enough room here to put one or I even think that I don't need one. I think it looks okay now, like this. So it's slightly tapered in. I could maybe taper it a bit more. see how the decoration look, looks okay I could do something I guess so this is a spindle gouge See how it looks. Okay, that's not too bad. Is it better? Eh, I don't know. You tell me what you think. And I'm quite careful when I'm sanding to roll this half bead. I want a nice crisp edge here. So this is linseed oil. Forgot to blow the dust off.
I usually first oil all the corners like this detail and this foot here and then all of the wider areas A nice simple ish shape, nothing too crazy. This would be ideal for salads or fruit, and you still have a nice wide rim if you fill it up with fruit. Let's say you can still see the grain. And that is wood actually. If you make like a fruit bowl, if you put like tin rim, then usually people overfill the the bowl with fruit and uh, kind of lost. The bowl is kind of lost in all of the fruits. So this kind of design I really like on fruit bowls just want to get it into the, the corner here I think I covered it all just let it soak in a bit and we'll wipe off the excess of it but sometimes video like this at the end shows a bit better so you can see nice crisp detail also this um, molding here acts like a reinforcement for that this, this corner this transition here so Everything turned out okay. Here it is our finished bowl from Cherry. Nice wide rim with half rolled bead as a decoration and a separation actually from the uh, rim to the bowl part. And um, uh, make sure you go after watching this video go uh, to Sam, Mike and Richard's version of wide rim bowl uh, the links will be down in the description below so let me know in the comments below what you think about my project and uh, make sure you go watch uh, Mike, Sam and Richard's one as well version and uh, stay tuned for the next month four-way project should be an interesting one